I want you to know that you are important. You are important. And, I, and anytime I speak to PE teachers or teachers in the physical education department, I want to reiterate that you are important because I know how it can feel sometimes as PE teachers. And if the question is, is do you believe this? And see, I know from my experience that I'm important as a PE teacher, but I also know that when I go to the doctor, the doctor says that you need to exercise 30 minutes a day. They don't say, hey, you need to study science. They don't say you need to uh, review history 30 minutes a day, but they say that for the rest of your life that you need to be active for 30 minutes a day. So if they're telling me that I must do something for 30 minutes a day for the rest of my life, it must be valuable. And because our content aligns with what the doctor is saying, then I know I must be valuable. The topic I'm focusing on today is leveraging PE to reconnect with today's scholars. We make some of the greatest connections in the school that I promise you that if we go from school from school to school uh, across this country, across the world, that the PE teachers or the teachers in the physical education department have the most connections and some of the strongest connections in, inside the whole building. It's something about our content that makes scholars let down their guard. It's something about our content that causes educators like us to let down our guard. And the amazing thing about it is other teachers can realize it. So much so that other teachers will call you and ask you to deal with the student in their class because they know you have a better connection with them. You're like, hey, like I don't have Timothy for third block, you do, so why am I trying to correct Timothy's behavior for your class when he gives me or she gives me no issue in my class, because other teachers know they cannot compete with the type of connection, the type of relationship that us PE teachers or teachers in the physical education department that we have with scholars. But something happened in 2019, 2020, disconnection was created. We went through a global pandemic. We went from being in school every single day to now we're virtual. And so now our scholars, the whole world was turned upside down. There was disconnection that was created. Just like I said that there has been disconnection between scholars and their teachers, scholars in the PE content and scholars and their peers, there's disconnection. And that, that reconnection is not gonna happen on its own. Like scholars didn't just come back to school after a pandemic and said, hey, let me just or let, let me pick it up where I left off and reconnect with my teachers or let me reconnect with this content. I know have I have been sedentary. I know I have been inactive for two years. So now that I'm back in PE, let me get up and play or or I know have been disengaged away from my friends. And now that I'm back in school, it's going to automatically happen. No, it's not. So it's going to take us as teachers to be intentional about reconnecting scholars with us, the educator. And, and with scholars with the content we teach and with their peers. But you might be asking a question, how do I connect with today's scholars? And you might look like this guy on the screen right here, where you're at the end of this school year, and you're like, man, I tried it all. I tried this method. I tried that method. I tried to be the cool teacher. I tried to be the teacher that came up with do, new activities and not just roll out the balls in PE. And it just you just still don't have that connection. And so what I've realized is that I believe I have a solution. From my experience and what I have implemented as a PE teacher and a teacher within the physical education department, I believe I have a solution that could get scholars to reconnect back to us, reconnect them with our PE content and reconnect them with our peers. And the first way is one, we must know ourselves as an educator. Two, we must know our audience. Who do we teach? Three, we must know our strategy and the implementation of that strategy that will result in connection. And then lastly, we must know our why. And so I want to start off by addressing the first point. The first step we need to take is we need to look in the mirror. Instead of trying to correct the scholar and see what's wrong with the scholar first, let's look at us. Let's look at our teaching methods. Let's look at, you know, what is it that I can do better before I even address what the scholar may have to do or may can do. We have to identify who we are as a teacher. And so as you type in the chat, I'm going to take time to share with you who I am as an educator. And as you see, on the left, the first picture on the left, 
is a picture of me in a broadcasting booth. I am a TV sports broadcaster. I call football and basketball games on ESPN3 platform. I, from the picture second to the left, is me playing football. I'm a former professional football uh, player, played uh, six seasons, five seasons in the Arena Football League, blessed to um, have a lot of success, win championships, um, playing professional football. I also, uh, the picture that is third from the left, um, I'm in a fraternity, the greatest fraternity uh, known to man, uh, Omega Psi Five Fraternity Incorporated. And then the last picture, far to the right, uh, you, is me rocking a shirt uh, with my company. Where I'm a CEO. I'm an entrepreneur. I have a company. We impact now. Um, and then you see I have some orange and white shoes on. They're, they're Jordans. They're Nikes. I'm into wearing some, you know, a lot of shoes that a lot of the scholars that we teach wear. And so this is who I am as a person. This is who I am as an educator. This is what I bring to the table. This is me, Jeremy Kelly. And so I challenge you to bring all of that to the classroom. All of what you just said, artist, uh, cook, uh, mom, you've been a mom, uh, you know, content creator, bring that to the classroom. That is who you are. Your scholars want who you are in the classroom. Stop bringing Clark Kent to the classroom. This is what we do. We say this, right? Before school and after school, this is who we are. We like, yo, hey, I do TV. I play football. I'm in a fraternity. I wear nice shoes. I got a business. Then we get to school and say, hey, I'm a PE teacher. Let's go. Line up. Roll the balls out. We bring Clark Kent to the classroom when our scholars want Superman or they want Wonder Woman. This is who our scholars need, and this is who they want. They don't want Clark Kent because they think Clark Kent is a robot. They think Clark Kent uh, uh, is not a human. They think that, hey, you're my teacher. You don't go to the grocery store. You don't have a life out here. But when you bring you to the classroom, now your scholars are able to connect with you, the human. I tell educators this all the time. You are not a teacher. Your students aren't students. We are all people. The role we play, I play the role of an educator. My, stu my scholars in the classroom play the role of a student, but they're people first. I'm a person first. So when I bring me to the classroom, when you bring Superman and Wonder Woman to the classroom, your scholars immediately connect with you, regardless of what content, what you may say that day, they're going to connect with you and say, ah, oh, Miss Smith is amazing. She does this. She do, he does this. Oh, Mr. Kellum, you call games? Are you going to call the game on ESPN this weekend? Really? That immediately, immediate connection. Stop bringing Clark Kent to the classroom and please bring Superman and Superwoman, Wonder Woman, to the classroom. Once we know who we are and we bring us to the classroom, now we must figure out who is our audience. Who is your audience? See, many of us, and I have run, in, I run into teachers all the time. They're like, hey, you know, I've been teaching for 50, 20 years. I taught this way um, 20 years ago, so I'm going to teach the same way. Or even teachers that taught in 2019, 2018, trying to come into 2023 with the same methods not realizing that your audience is totally different. You may be saying, but no, these are the same scholars from 2020. Okay, to a certain extent, but they went through a pandemic. And to be honest, I'm not the same after a pandemic. You're not the same after a pandemic. So how can we expect scholars, students, young kids to be the same? So you got to understand who is your audience? Well, let me help you. Your audience that you're teaching right now, whether it's in primary school, elementary, middle, high school, the Gen Zers and younger. And so it's good to say, okay, yeah, I teach Gen Zers. I got it. But let me challenge you to go deeper. Figure out the pain points of your audience. What do they experience? What do they connect with? What do they go through? What have they gone through that you can impart and put in your lessons or bring to the table through being you that will impact your scholars in a great way? And so Gen Zers and younger, they're social media driven. I know you're like, duh, they got their phones all the time. Right. So use that to your advantage. The social media driven. They live sedentary lifestyles. 
And a lot of that is because it just went through a pandemic, two years of not being physically active. Staying at home, got them hooked on the phone even more, got them hooked on their device even more. So they're accustomed to sedentary lifestyles, not being as active. And then I did some research and it says they prefer the soft life. And I know some of you are like, man, I knew it. Those kids are soft. Not soft in that way. They prefer the soft life in the meaning of when I grew up and when my parents and my grandparents grew up, we know work, 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 work. Like Rihanna, right? Y'all know Rihanna performing the Super Bowl. She got to work, 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 work. I know my voice doesn't sound good, but you get it, right? But that's not these kids today that you teach. Their mentality is, what can I do that, I, that would get me to retire by the age of 35? That's the mindset they're on, right? That they're not trying to work themselves into the ground, that they're trying to figure out a smarter way or, or a, a less strenuous way to be successful because they still got goals, they still have dreams, but and they still want to be successful. They're just trying to choose another route. Then three out of 10, about 29%, 30% of them admit to experiencing anxiety. Now, anxiety didn't just come in 2020. Anxiety was here since the existence. But now it's more prevalent. Now scholars are more comfortable. People are more comfortable uh, speaking about it. And to be honest, we all have mental health. Not of all, all of us, not all of us have mental illnesses, but we all have mental health. Just like everybody has a physical, has physical health. Not everybody has physical illness. So we all have a mental health that we must cater to and exactly the same as your scholars. And then they prefer alternate social interactions. So where well, we're used to, hey, we go outside. I grew up going outside. We play person to person, face to face. They like being engaged through social media. So when you know your audience, now you know, okay, I know who I am. I know who my audience is. And now you have the formula for connection. So now we have the formula for connection. This is our strategy that I take me, who I am, not Clark Kent. But I bring Superman, Wonder Woman, and I add that to what I know about my audience, and this will give me strategy. Strategy. When it comes to reconnecting scholars with their teachers, so I'm going to take who I am, and I'm going to take what I know about my audience, I'm going to combine the two, and this will allow me to connect with scholars. So what I know about Gen Z's and younger, my audience, is that they're social media driven. They love TikTok. So if you're going to play music in your classroom or in the gym, I know you love the music in your day and age. I walked to, uh, into a gym one time and, and I heard uh, an earth, wind, and fire playing. I just broke out into like an electric slide. And I was like, oh, this is so amazing. But I said, wait, the kids aren't, they, they're not dancing. They weren't dancing because they didn't grow up in that time. So the music sounds good to you as the teacher, but it's not connecting with your scholars. So how about you find some clean TikTok songs and when you perform your dynamic warm up, when you're going through a lesson and you're in the gym and you're playing music, play songs from TikTok. I guarantee you that you will have scholars getting up, getting more involved, paying more attention, uh, um, paying more attention to what you're saying. Why? Because you're playing their music. Also, it will make you look cooler. They don't say, oh, they, a lot of times they say, Mr. Kelly, what you know about that music? I'm like, you know, I always like, I've been listening to music before you were born, right? But to them, they're like, oh my goodness, Mr. Kellum listens to our music. He's cool. Automatic, boom, connection with your scholars. Then check out my shoes. Now I'm not telling you how to dress to go to PE. I'm not telling you that you got to change your whole attire. But I know that I'm intentional about what I wear to school. Even when I, when I go speak to scholars, my wife, even when she shops for uh, a, a gift for me and she's getting me shoes, she'll say, hey, Jeremy, you know, I got these shoes uh, because I know that you can wear them when you go speak and the kid's going to love it. Because it's so many times where I have walked into a classroom, I have walked into a, a, a school for a speaking engagement. And, and before I said anything, I immediately had their attention. I immediately connected with them. They connected with me because they looked at my feet. It was like, oh, he got the new Jordans on. He got the new Nikes. Boom. Scholars reconnecting with me. And then lastly, like I said, I bring my family. You don't have to bring your family, but you can bring your hobbies. You can bring things that you do. But I do this because it humanizes me. 
It lets them know, oh, Mr. Kellum, you got a wife, you got a kid, you got kids. Oh, Mr. Kellum, you're human, you're a person. And so when my wife and son and daughter, they come to the games or the events, they immediately feel a closer uh, 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 attraction and better connection with me and my family because they know Mr. Kellum is a human. So these are strategies that you can do, bringing you, bring, adding it together with what you know about your audience to reconnect your scholars with you. Then we talk about reconnecting scholars with the content we teach. How we can reconnect scholars with the P content we, we teach is one, we, can sh we have to show them the correlation between PE and health. And one of the ways you can do this, you can you can do it through survey. You can you can uh, you know have them journal, but you can ask them, hey, raise your hand. Who's who's stressed out? Who feels stressed? You can have them raise their hand. Hey, who who has a you know feeling a little low in your self esteem right now? You can have them raise their hand. Hey, who is experiencing anxiety? And then you say, hey, who doesn't sleep well at night? And so you're going to have many scholars raise their hand for all of them, or at least uh, one for every one you ask. People, are, your scholars are going to be raising their hands, and then you you respond with this question: Who would like relief from stress, low self-esteem, anxiety, and who would want better sleep immediately, or or, or who would want the 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 key to to improving all those areas immediately? You're going to have hands. Me, me, me. I want to I want to have less stress. I want to, you know, have a higher self-esteem, more confidence. I want to be less, you know, anxious about things. Man, I really want to sleep good at night. And then you hit them with, okay, what well, exercise in PE? Because regular exercise reduces stress, boosts your confidence, your self-esteem, decreases anxiety, and improves sleep. And so when scholars are able to connect and say, man, okay, so it's just not about me playing in PE. But, but when I do things in PE, it's actually benefiting my overall health. Things and ways, see, I've been trying to self-harm, I've been trying to self-medicate, I've been trying to do things to, to, to distract me from what I'm really actually feeling when there's a natural way to relieve and help me in these areas, and it's through exercise. And when we get scholars to understand that, I promise you, you will get them more engaged and connected with your content. Then what we also must do is we must expose them to alternative ways to exercise. Stop just rolling out the balls in PE. I get it all the time. They're like, well, Mr. Kellum, you know, you know, the reason why we say PE teachers don't do anything, because every time I go to the gym, it's the same sports, either playing football, roll the soccer ball out, or they, they roll the basketball out. And I get it. Some, some days it is free play. Fridays, there is nothing wrong with free play. But when if that's the only activities we're showing our scholars, we're doing them a disservice because I asked scholars just about a month ago, I, I said, hey, what are some other ways other than lifting weights, running or walking that you can exercise? They couldn't give me one. So I know that that if we expose scholars and say, hey, bike riding is exercise. A lot of scholars, especially elementary, middle school, they're riding their bikes to school. So when you point and show them that riding your bike is exercise, it's like, oh, what, Mr. Keller, I'm gonna ride my bike all the time to school. I'm gonna get more and more exercise. I didn't know this was exercise. Or you incorporate an activity like ultimate frisbee, where they're like, okay, um, I think I can throw a frisbee. It's it's a less daunting task because a lot of scholars they they're afraid to go try basketball. They're like, okay, basketball, I'm not good at that. Soccer, I don't really know how to do that. Football. So when they when it requires specific skills, a lot of scholars. They fade to the back or they, they choose not to participate. But when you get a sport that, that is like ultimate frisbee, but it's just throwing a frisbee, catching it, and you show them, hey, let's go play. They're so caught up in playing that they don't even realize they're exercising, that their heart rate has, has went higher than the resting heart rate, that, that it has approached their maximum heart rate, 50% of their maximum heart rate, which, which is exercise. So, so expose them to these things. Then you can show them swimming. A lot of the younger scholars, older scholars, especially elementary, middle, they love swimming. But they don't know that that's exercise. It's like, hey, it's a fun time. But when you explain to them that when you go swimming, you work every muscle in your body, then they are more prone to say, hey, I want to go swimming more. Because not only am I having fun, but I'm exercising. And then that last one, do TikTok dances with the kids. I didn't say get into the camera. I didn't say record them on your phone. I know there's regulations, stipulations to that. But what I'm saying is 
put some, do Zumba, do things, and then your scholars will be like, okay, let's do TikTok dances. They're engaged. They don't even know that they're exercising. They just say, oh man, my teacher's so cool. All we did was TikTok dances. We just had so much fun. But not only they were exercising, their heart rate went up and it stayed up for 20 to 30 minutes, which means they got exercise for that day. And so we got to expose them to alternative ways to exercise. But not only just alternative ways to exercise, we got to expose them to lifestyle fun. One thing I realized in, in you know, at the long run in education is that our scholars won't be students forever, but they will be people as long as they live. And so if I'm only preparing them to excel in school, I'm failing them. That, that when I prepare them to succeed, I must prepare them to succeed in school, but I also must prepare them to succeed in life. And so you never want your scholars to go and be the one that's picked last in the family at the family cookout or the one that never gets chosen for the activities. So introduce them to lifestyle fun like ladder ball. Ladder ball is it, it, not only fun, but it's working your triceps, biceps. You see the legs being activated. You're being physically active. Spike ball, you're working different muscles. You're getting cardio, you're moving. And then you're building camaraderie with your students because they got to work together. They're close, they're in tech, and they're talking, face-to-face -face interaction. And then you got cornhole. Cornhole is a great activity, it's competition, but they're having great con conversation and they're learning ways that when one day when they become parents, one day when they get married, one day when they have family events, they're going to say, hey, you know what? My PE teacher taught me this game, cornhole or spike ball or ladder ball that I want to incorporate with our family. And it's another way to be active and to stay active. And these two ways, right, exposing them to alternative ways to exercise and exposing them to lifestyle fun are ways that scholars will become connected to our content as well as letting them see and know the actual benefits as it pertains to their health when they choose to exercise. Now I have to get them reconnected with the scholars, with their peers. And how I found a successful way to do this is by doing team-centered sports or doing sports where more than one person is going at a time. Like I said, know your audience. The audience we're dealing with, Gen Z's are younger, 30% of them are saying they experience anxiety. A lot of their anxiety uh, uh, gets heightened when they're put on the spot or when they're the only one. Like if you say, okay, you go one at a time and do a layup, or oh, their anxiety gets heightened. But if you have about three lines, four lines of people doing layups, now they're a little less anxious because they know all eyes aren't on them. So we do team center sports, kickball, dodgeball, wiffle ball, it is a great team sport. It's a little specific, uh, skill specific, but it's still a great, great activity. And so when you have team centered sports like kickball and dodgeball and wiffle ball, it still plays to who the scholars are. They prefer the soft life. They prefer sedentary lifestyles. So how can I give today's scholars uh, activity and still allow them to rest? Well, kickball. Kickball allows scholars to be active and inactive at the same time. So if I'm up to kick and my team up to kick, but I'm not kicking yet, I'm resting. Scholars mm -hmm. enjoy this because they like a lot of them don't want to be active. And then the only time they got to be active is now when they get up and kick and then they run around the bases. Same thing when they're in the field. They get the rest until their person or their teammate rolls the ball and then they got to get active. But then after the play ends, they're able to rest again. So doing these intermittent activities or intermittent resting uh, within activities allow scholars to get a little bit of what they want and then get to allow us as educators to get what we want, which is we want them to be active. And so we don't want to just say run two miles and that's our activity. They're going to be like, oh my goodness, I got to run two miles. I don't want to do this. But if I give them activities that allow them to play, allow them to have some rest in between, we will have a better connection and they were able to connect with their scholars. They're able to connect with their peers while they play. And then also the cross-class competitions. What we realized, uh, me and some of my coworkers, is that, you know, we were bringing our uh, classes to the gym uh, and we were, you know, doing our activities individually within our class. And like I say, Team Center Sports brought the, built the camaraderie with, amongst our class. But then we, once we started doing cross-class competitions, we realized that, hey, our scholars that were not really engaged a lot, 
their their competitiveness is 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 creeping up that that hey they're talking trash like like you know polite trash but they're getting competitive and they're like hey Mr. Kellum we're gonna beat your class tomorrow and and that cross class competition brought the classes together and 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 it brought it gave them a better connection with their peers and then by them competing against other class members or other classes now they're interacting with scholars that they would have never interacted with because they don't have the same class with them and so by doing that you build the camaraderie amongst peers you allow the teamwork to be organic and then like i said by doing team-centered sports sports that have intermittent resting within them you allow scholars to be able to reconnect with their peers and and be successful in that. The last thing I, I want to end with before we get to the Q&A is that I, I want to encourage you to know your why, right? Know your why. It's, it's, it's kind of like a vision. Um, your vision as a PE teacher, your purpose. Um, there's a book that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And so in other words, like if you don't know like your why you're a PE teacher or why you're in education or why you're in the physical education department, you, you might be lost. Right. And, and then some of you are saying, well, you know, Jeremy, I started my teaching career uh, with a why, you know, but since we went on this pandemic and went through a pandemic and we went virtual and we came back, there's just been a disconnect between me and my why that I know why I started being a teacher, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why should I keep going? Why should I continue to be a PE teacher? Because what I realized is that as people, we need a why. As PE teachers, we must know our why. And many times our why evolves, especially after a pandemic, because our scholars change, the profession changes, um, and, and the demands on us change. And so our why evolves. So I say to you is that you got to figure out what your scholars need from you right now. I know you might have joined the profession to be a PE teacher for a whole nother reason, like for money, right? I actually did have someone say they became a teacher, you know, for the money, right? They were young, about 22. So that makes sense. But they're not teaching now for the money that you got to rediscover why am I teaching? And once you rediscover your new why, your, your evolved why, you got to figure out what do my scholars in 2023 need from me now? And when you realize that, then you need to meet them where they are and take them to the place or give them the intangibles, give them the things you know that they need to be and become the person they've been called to be and become in this life.